Hey, what's up, guys? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound, um, just fellow collector, uh, talking about the uh, Pocket Change Market Report today. And this is for December 18, 2021. Hope you guys are having a great start to your weekend. Uh, you know, here we are. We're a week out from Christmas. Who would have thought that we would get to this point at such a rapid pace? It felt like summertime was over as as soon as you could blink an eye and it has come and gone. And here we are toward the tail end of the holiday season. And I tell you what, it's just, it's been a magical kind of carpet ride uh, throughout this whole whole year of uh, just numismatics and uh, the way that it's shaped the secondary market has been nothing but breathtaking. Again, you guys have heard me say this expression before. It's really a fun, really wonderful ride to be in coins and currency today. Um, it, it doesn't matter what capacity. I, I mean, there's a lot of things to love. The market is strong. Of course, if you are a, a dealer or a seller, you guys know that the market is robust. And today is no different. Today, however, the Pocket Change Market Report focuses on all of the fantastic cherry picks and discoveries and finds that exist out there in the wild. Now, this could be going through just regular good old change that you receive from your barista at a coffee joint. Or perhaps you like to go to the bank, crack open some bank rolls. That's everybody's favorite sport, right? But there are also the folks that like to frequent the coin shops and shows. Finding something that has, you know, that obviously has some sort of error or variety on it. Okay, something raw, ungraded, or it could be graded too, you know. People do cherry pick. Uh, unattributed graded coins but however you do it to where you're coming up with just all these amazing you know minor to major varieties and errors some way somehow you know they are going to end up on the pocket change market report because a lot of people do like discovering these coins and subsequently selling them on ebay to help kind of supplement various other income streams um, so, I mean, this week we have a, a pretty nice list. Now, albeit it's a little bit light today, um, not because I didn't think that there was a lot of coins that sold for a good amount of money or definitely needed some highlights, but we're just going to keep it a little bit abbreviated for this holiday, just true holiday week. And then our uh, midweek report will also be the same. So today we have 25 coins. Probably about 8 to 10 coins lighter than normal, but it's kind of going to be a little bit quicker. Hopefully about 10 minutes quicker, uh, but it's also going to give you guys the same level of inspiration to go out there and do your own hunting this week. I know a lot of people are off this week. I know my kids are off this week from school, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity to really dig in deep to find, find some of these pieces before the calendar flips to 2022. One significant find that I had talked about earlier in the week, a new discovery, 2021 Lincoln Cent uh, error coin. Finally, we have a really good sale to kind of, you know, sink our teeth into, to kind of explore, maybe just digest exactly what we have here. It'll give you guys a little bit of perspective on how much a coin like this can sell for on the secondary market. I'm happy to share that with you in this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. As you guys know, these are all raw coins sold by the sellers, and we're using their images for expressing exactly what was sold. So, you know, some of the images obviously are going to be a little bit on the dark side. They're going to be a little bit out of focus. But you get what you get right here, starting out uh, with a lot of Lincoln Memorial Cent errors. Now, we have here 10 coins, and they are all 1999. They're all a single single date, which is kind of cool. Um, and, you know, they're all off-center by anywhere from about 10% to as high as about 25-30%. Um, there's one exception. This coin right here looks to be just a little bit broad struck, uh, you know, compared to the other nine coins, where, which are obviously struck off center. Uh, for the most part, they all have readable dates, which is important to collectors of this particular error series. Um, but this is just really a good starter lot. And a lot of these coins, as you could tell, 
exhibit some sort of circulation wear. Probably maybe this one and possibly the broad, broad strike and the coin next to it had seen the least amount of circulation. But all in all, these are coins, ladies and gentlemen, that you can find out there today. Now, I love talking about lots, and we actually have a number of them in full display here this the, today in this PCMR video. And what I like most about lots is you could really pick up a lot of error coins as long as they're legit, they look good, there's not a lot of funky damage and other things going on where it's going to suppress the value of them. But the idea is you pick up one of these lots, you may cherry pick maybe one or two coins that you could add to your collection and sell off the rest and try and double your money as best as you can. So if you recognize lots that are selling for a lot less than you would you know imagine then those would be a good pickup this particular lot of 10 lincoln cent errors all sold for 69 dollars and that's through 51 bids so this was organically bid up to this level if you looked at the per piece price at about six dollars and 90 cents I mean, you really have a pretty decent shot at doubling your money here. I would probably relist every single one of these coins at like $12.99 shipped. And then you're going to be there all day long for profitability. So again, another thing to keep in mind, if you see these lots for sale and they sell for a lot less than what they would normally sell for, this would be a good opportunity to pick this up. So $69.00. Not too bad. I would have certainly considered this. Our first singular coin of the week is going to be this 1929 Mercury Dime. Um, all in all, you know, it seems like a relatively tough date, but, you know, this coin um, looks to have circulated a little bit. You can see some of the circulation wear on the highest points of the coin. Um, and I'll be honest, the coin kind of looks cleaned as well. Um, so there's probably some details, you know, kind of like net graded um, uh, affair going on here. You know, it's not the perfect coin. It does exhibit a little bit of luster, but just based off of the dull nature of the fields in certain areas, I'm, I'm thinking that this one was probably an old cleaning at some point. But the reason why that this coin is here on the list is it has what looks to be a crack, but all in reality, this is a defective planchet. So... Um, you know, with very little effort, I'm pretty sure you can be able to tear off that little piece, but you don't want to do that. You want to keep these lamination peels. You want to keep the, um, the, the, the cracks and all that retained the best that you can on those coins. Um, because you know, that's, that, that's going to be a good thing for collectors and people that want it. Um, they don't want something that's been played around with or artificially, uh, helped along, so to speak. Uh, but this one right here sold for $26.02, and that's with 13 bids. The moral of the story for this coin is to look through your scrap silver. There's a lot of really cool errors and varieties that exist on much older coins that maybe you guys are not aware of. So pick up that magnifier, get in close with your silver, and then be a hero, right? You're going to be making a lot more money than what the melt value is for the respective pieces. We do have a relatively newer coin, and this one, ladies and gentlemen, is really subtle, okay? This is a coin that easily anyone would overlook, and it's understandable. It's a brand new 2020, and just based off of the overall condition of the coin, it has certainly gotten a little bit of circulation wear. So it's changed hands a few times, um, but, you know, you do notice that there are a few uh, seller-provided circular images on the coin, um, you know, we're going to be looking at die chips on this one. So you're going to find them not only on the reverse in the olive sprigs and the oak leaves and, you know, in the torch like you see there. And they're really minor. They're really small. Again, this is where you're going to have to utilize your magnifier. If you don't have one, I have some available below in the description box along with, you know, more advanced tools like magnifier or, uh, um, USB microscopes, you know, I have a few really nice ones available in my description box below, uh, for a reasonable rate. So if you're looking to pick one up during the holidays, you could do that and possibly get it to you by Christmas. But on the obverse, obviously poor old Rosie is developed some sort of like 
I don't know what you call this. Uh, a lot of warts, a lot of moles, and everything else. Um, you know, so you see a lot of dye chips uh, right here above the eye, here in the nostril area. And then the most common area is going to be here at the crux of the, uh, the mouth, uh, right on the side of the mouth right there. It's a common spot for little dye chips. So as minor as it seems, it did sell. And that's why it's on the list. This one realized $8.91. Imagine if you had found a few of these, maybe in much nicer condition, you could ask a little bit more for them. Here's a really neat one right here. Now, obviously, you know, this is probably something you're not going to find in pocket change, let alone going through um, bank rolls. But this might be an opportunity to find one of these in either a wheat scent bag or possibly for incredibly cheap at a local coin shop or show. So make sure you know the market for out of um, that or obsolete design type coins that are that exhibit some sort of neat error like this 45 here which is off center by about 10 percent um, it features some pretty decent red kind of mint red in there so it's a nice grade however the one thing that maybe is not too attractive to maybe a coin dealer or other collector is that it has some carbon spotting and other corrosion areas and bits on the offers of the coin but that's okay there's still marketability for something like this because it could be a usable coin in a date type set of off-center strikes this particular coin sold for forty two dollars and eighty eight cents and that's with 19 bids so again another very active listing all right our good old seller is back at it again with another 2000 piece sacagawea dollar this of course you guys know is on the list because it is the wounded eagle or speared eagle reverse uh variety okay this is also referred to as the fs901 in the cherry picker's guide but just based off of the background image of the seller holding the coin with his cotton gloves on you know this guy has found a whole bunch of these in the course of the last six months and has sold them in, in pretty deep numbers like i i think i've witnessed this individual selling probably as much as like five or six of these a week that's how much um dollar coins he or she goes through i mean this is a real opportunity there's a ton of these they're not particularly rare but they are popular with collectors this one right here as you can see is called the speared eagle for a reason it's got a pair of die gouges that go right through the breast of the uh, eagle on the reverse into the wing you can see the other secondary die gouge right here that's much shorter but this is just a fantastic variety that is uh, that is considered one of the top dollar uh, type of varieties okay or call it error or whatever you want to call it but um since it's been you know knighted through the cherry picker's guide as being a marquee find you know obviously it's going to um establish itself as being a very wanted coin in the marketplace this coin right here with a few little condition areas of note sold for 153 dollars and 48 cents prices just continue to move up and up and up um, as these things dry up now this one's not readily apparent of being anything spectacular but this is a bicentennial ike dollar okay you can see the dual date there on the obverse but for an eagle-eyed collector or treasure seeker all right something like this with a much thicker fatter rim on the front of the coin compared to a very well centered strike on the reverse it really does raise an eyebrow especially for a series that really doesn't have a whole lot of errors to be found we've seen clipped planchets we've seen some really incredibly rare off-center strikes in the ike dollar series this is just a minor misaligned die okay so that that obverse die was slightly misaligned during the strike maybe there was a little play in there when the strike occurred but this is what you know what you want to find something that's minor is this um it, it gets especially good when the um the, the edge of the coin touches or cuts off some of the devices on the opposite side of that fat rim uh, so you can see that the edge of the coin goes right up to the letters and liberty which is awfully close it's like a it's a, a buzz 
um, you know, for all other, you know, kind of words that describe it. But, you know, this coin right here, I'm willing to bet has passed through many hands, was probably in just a bulk lot of like dollars. And it really took one individual that wanted to kind of cherry pick something um, to find, find it. All right. And that's really just, you know, a matter of going through, digging in, getting your hands dirty, finding these. So as minor as this is, as a misaligned die, I'm happy to say that it did sell for $75. Ike dollar errors just continue to be some of the most priciest errors out there because of its scarcity. Now here's our next slot. We have a lot of five Jefferson Nickel off-center strikes. They all exhibit a date, which is kind of cool. I like lots like this, and each and every single coin appears to be in some sort of mint state condition. Lots of luster. These are very nice, high-grade examples. Uh, we do see a number of 1995 P's here. I believe there's like four of them, and I think this is an 88. But, you know, just a really beautiful lot. They're all different in some regards. This one sold for $135. Um, I don't think there's a lot of opportunity to buy this at that price to be able to sell it as singular pieces. So keep that in mind. This is probably not a great example of a lot that I would personally pick up to try and profit from. Now, for some of you, uh, you know, hardcore U.S. coin fanatics that understand just, uh, you know, the, our cap capabilities as a U.S. Mint system. You know, you have the Philadelphia Mint, you have the Denver Mint, San Francisco Mint, you have the West Point Mint. Um, but some of you may not realize that, you know, our mints here stateside had produced quite a few world coins back in the day, especially during that World War One to World War Two era, all right? Philippines was one of those countries where, you know, we struck some of their coins because of the um, American occupation. So because of that, you know, you really come up with some pretty neat errors that normally under, you know, similar circumstances, you would find them on U.S. coins. But instead, we have a 1944S, five centavos uh, denomination, uh, Philippines um I, this is, I don't think, this might be silver. I'm not sure. It looks silver, but when you take a look at this thing, five centavos. No, this one's nickel um, for sure. Uh, but this is a 44S. It's off center by about 25%. This is a very attractive coin. Obviously, this looks like something that came from one of the mints, uh, in this case, the San Francisco mint. And uh, this one sold for $166.35, and that's with 24 bits. Just an outstanding, extremely rare coin. If you find something like this at a coin dealer, and they just really don't care enough about it to charge the appropriate market value for it, then pick it up, add it to your collection, or flip it. It's a good one. We have a lot of two Washington Quarter uh, curved clips, all right? The 78D that you see on the top left of the screen is obviously a little bit better looking um, as far as eye appeal compared to the 86, but it's another two coin lot. And the reverse of the coins look like this. You do have some Blakesley effect on both coins, uh, which is a flattening of the rim on the opposite side of the clip, which is important. You want to know that your clip is the real deal this one this pair sold for 22 dollars here in the last day or so and by the way all these listings are from the tw past 24 to 36 hours here's another good one here a 1937 lincoln wheat cent another obsolete coin um much like the 45 that we see before it However, this one here, it looks like it's circulated a lot. A lot of people had certainly overlooked this as anything else but one cent. Um, this one is an uncentered broad strike. You do have some semblance of a rim on both the obverse and reverse of the coin. So, um, you know, the collar wasn't fully engaged during the strike. Metal flow has to go outwards. This one sold for $24.45, and that's with six bits. Here's another erstwhile bicentennial coin, this time on the most um, famous of the three different bicentennial coins of 1976. This is the Drummer Boy Reverse, and this one is another broad strike. Um, so, like I've said, 
Errors on bicentennial coins are extremely coveted, and the market seems to be stupid on these. This one is just another example. Sold for $54. And, you know, outside of that, it really doesn't look like anything more spectacular than some of the other minor errors that you come across. But, again, when you find them, you keep them. Because somehow, some way, there is going to be a collector that's going to want these. Here's another good one to pick up in just a bulk bin, you know, of uh, generic nickels. You know, if you uh, went to a coin shop and you found uh, found like a little uh, copper container of just, you know, common date uh, V nickels or buffalo nickels, you know, you could find pretty neat stuff like this. This is an 1883 V nickel, uh, Liberty Head. Uh, this one has a few letters in Liberty, so it's in decent shape. But the biggest selling point of this coin is going to be this big old chunk of metal missing from the obverse of the coin. So this is obviously another defective planchet, um, kind of like an improper alloy mix to the point where, um, you know, a piece had fallen off. All right, so pretty insane here. This one is the um, uh, no sense version. Uh, so this is a coin that was uh, um, dipped in gold back in the day. They actually called them racketeer nickels. They were trying to be passed off um, by unscrupulous uh, highway robbers and a bunch of other you know guys as a uh, half eagle. So uh, yeah, they, they've tried and failed miserably. Although a couple people I'm sure have probably gotten had because of that but this coin right here is anything else but a racketeer nickel this one sold for 24 dollars, and that's with five bids again i could envision in the perfect world you walk into a coin shop see this in a bin for like 85 cents uh you pick it up and you turn around and sell for 25 i'd say that's a pretty good uh flip all right, we got our next lot here. This time a lot of five off-center struck uh, Roosevelt dimes. Uh, now, four of them I could say are off-center, but you got this one here that's uh, broad struck. You have a full rim. This one might even be broad struck as well, the 77. But again, this is a really nice group of coins. They're all in nice shape. Um, another one to look out for for possible um, uh, resale opportunity this one sold for $35, and that's with two bids. So at $7 per, there is some meat on the bones. Again, you could throw each one of these up for $12.99, and uh, you probably make about 60% profit on something like this. All right, so we are coming up toward the end of the year, and um, these crown die chip Washington Cross into Delaware quarters have been an absolute uh, delight to find in change. Uh, you can still find them today. Uh, but I've noticed in just the last few weeks, the amount of full-size die chips has been dwindling. All right, But the other kind of like mid and earlier progression type of chips um, continue to be strong on eBay. This is another one right here, 2021P. Um, this one has the much smaller kind of like mid-state uh, crown formation there uh, upon closer examination that's what this one looks like great job by the seller by the way for capturing these fantastic images this one sold for $25.51 and that's with 12 bids I've noticed that these have come down slightly but not enough to make a really big impression on the overall market of these coins um, they used to be thirty to forty dollar coins. Now they're in the twenty to thirty dollar range for the smaller die chips. But here is, of course, the crown jewel of the Washington Crossing, the Delaware Quarter. This is going to be the full hamburger die chip crown that covers part of E Pluribus Unum. Uh, a few of these had sold. This particular example, uh, a best offer was accepted. The original asking price was one hundred fifty four dollars and seventy five cents. I didn't have the data from TerraPeak to give you a firm amount of money that this one did sell for, so I would imagine between $125 and $140. Uh, but there was also another example that sold within, I'd say, about four to six hours of this one that had realized $134.74. So, yeah, the prices have dropped a little bit. This used to be like a $150 to $200 coin. Um, but it's kind of retraced back to what I feel like is a more manageable amount of money. Now, that's not going to last too long because more of these that are coming out 
are considerably more circulated. So we're not seeing nearly as many just gem BUs like we did uh, three months ago. So something to keep in mind, this is still easy free attendees if you do come across them. Oh, this is a neat error. You don't see this that often. 1995 P. Jefferson Nickel with an indent. Uh, so there was an overlapped coin on there, but there was also just a slight little hint of brockage on there as well. Um, really nice coin, uh, a, a very scarce error type, and this one sold for $32.89, and that's with three bids. Here's a 1999 Lincoln Memorial cent. This one is a full centered um, broad strike. Man, this thing is gorgeous, but it is one of the more common dates to find off-center strikes and broad strikes. But this one right here, if you need it for your collection, did sell for $14.26, and that's with four bids. And then more and more scrap silver hunts can lead to a find like this. This is a 1964 Kennedy half dollar. Of course, you guys know this is a 90 percenter. Last final date of 90 percent uh, Kennedy half dollars uh, for circulation, of course. Uh, but this one right here, as you can tell, has two rather shallow curved clips on there. You have one here by the nine of the date and then between B and E and Liberty. Again, just another coin that you could find in your scrap um, that is worth a whole heck of a lot more than melt value. This one sold for $38.75, and that's organically bid up through 23 total bids. And this is one that, you know, that I've even overlooked and passed up. Uh, you know, at first you know, glance, laminations aren't really a whole lot of anything, you know, in the error world. Um, it's just the impurities and the alloy mix um, allow for these coins to flake, you know, along with the um, just the bad annealing issues on some of the denominations. Uh, you know, you could get some pretty nasty looking um, delaminations and retained laminations. This one right here has a few lamination pieces that are uh, obviously still on the coin, and that's what gives it more value. It's a 1926, it's a beater, you know, it's a well circulated coin. This one, oh my goodness, sold for $44.05, um, which is just an incredible amount of money for a coin that five years ago, you couldn't even give away for $1 to $2. So these have certainly gone up in value. The older the coin, the more desirable they are. Now, speaking of uh, overachieving uh, auction listing, we have a two-coin lot. Uh, so we got a Jefferson Nickel off-center strike with barely a readable date, might look like to be an 83 or 85. But we also have a 1996 uh, full date Lincoln Memorial scent. So there's the backs of them. They are in pretty decent shape, although we're beginning to see some corrosion here on the zinc of this Lincoln scent. Uh, this two-coin lot realized $79.49, and that's with 12 bits. I don't know what the deal is. It might be the nickel that's driven a lot of the price here. It could be the, the, the Lincoln cent either. A 96 is a relatively scarce date for this type of uh, strike. But another thing to keep in mind, with the nickel, it also has a clash die. So that probably would have contributed a lot of the value of this. Uh, so it's like a dual error coin. And usually with those things, you know, if they get figured out, by a number of people, the bids can go pretty nuts. So, now here's just another simple lamination peel. This time on a 1940 Lincoln Weedy. Uh, as you can see, it it looks like a big old chunky cigar coming out of his mouth, uh, Lincoln's mouth. That is. So, you know, it's a kind of a coincidental placement of a, you know either a strike through or a lamination or something. Um, that kind of gives it an endearing, you know, type of look. And that's what people want. They want, like, funky, you know, looking coins that maybe appear like something is there. Uh, but this 1940, again, it's a well-circulated coin. And it sold for $10.50. That's what four bits. So there were a few people interested in this one. There's a little bit of a close-up of that lamination. Uh, pretty nice. 
Here's a 1982 bronze. This is a large date Lincoln Memorial set. Now, you guys are pretty familiar with these error types. This one was struck through a late stage cap die. All right, so it's late enough stage where it's like razor thin at this point, and you're getting some of the main de design devices striking through that thin cap die on there. But, you know, this is a decent coin, uh, all, albeit it does have just a wide array of carbon spotting, so that's a, uh, a corrosion issue. Um, again, if you need it for a collection, I mean, that's a pretty good example. However, this one sold for $39.99. And here's a 1941 Jefferson Nickel. Uh, at first glance, it's really nothing to really write home to mother about. It's a really well-worn uh, example. However, look at the reverse. This is a coin that split right down the middle on its edge uh, after the strike, uh, because obviously there's no second piece of this. It's just this half with the date, which is pretty neat. I like it. Uh, but, you know, this is a, an occurrence, again, on a date of nickel where it was really common to see annealing issues. So uh, this was not a very well-crafted planchet before the strike. And then, you know, it didn't take long for it to fall off and then recirculate. This one sold for $68.50. All right, guys, we got two big ones coming up here. Okay, 2021 coins are all the buzz, as you guys know, this year. All right, the first one is going to be, of course, the 2021 Lincoln Shield Scent. They're both Shield Scents to wrap it up in this video. Uh, this one, as you can see by the date, has a pretty nice strike through, in addition to some uh, parallel feeder finger scrapes right there in front of Lincoln's mouth. Um, this is one that was discovered much earlier on in the year, I would say probably sometime after the release of these coins people were finding these back in like march and april uh, but here's another example uh, just to kind of you know fill you in update you on the market of this particular strike through this one sold for 19 dollars and three cents and that's with 10 bids i think these have gotten as high as like 40 50 bucks early on but you know as more of them come out uh and they're not incredibly spectacular but when you do see them they're worth pulling out because at 1,900 times face value, I mean, that's a pretty good trade-off. I would take that all day long. However, the last coin, ladies and gentlemen, is the big one. This is the one that I had reported on earlier in the week. New discovery, um, multiple different types of progressions of this retained die break that you see on the obverse of the coin. Um, have yet to see a full-fledged cut version. Um, you know, of course, this is a much later stage type of break. Uh, you could see part of the date still there. There has been an example where no date was even visible on that coin. Uh, that was actually on coincommunity.com. Uh, but, you know, you could see a lot of Lincoln's jacket still struck. So it's not a full-fledged cut, but this one right here has plenty of displacement. It's a gorgeous example. You have considerable weakness on that same spot on the reverse this is, ladies and gentlemen, what we are all paying to play, all right? You go to the bank, you find these. By the way, these are Philadelphia coins, so if you're on the East Coast, look for them. Um, a number of the examples have been found in the state of Virginia, but I, I am led to believe that there has been some found in New York as well. But I would leave no stone unturned. Check them out everywhere you're at as long as you're receiving Philadelphia minted shield sets this is a huge one and a huge bar has been set this coin ladies and gentlemen sold for 364 dollars and 75 cents through 17 bits which makes it effectively the modern day undisputed king of kings of errors for 2021 and beyond i challenge you guys to find anything more disgusting there is another lot that is going to sell in about a day uh, from one of my regular favorite sellers. Uh, but he has a two-coin lot with an earlier progression and a mid-progression of the same error. So be sure you check that one out. Um, it should sell for a pretty stout amount of money. But hey, this is a good way to start it out here. And uh, the coin is imperfect. Um, you know, it looks it's circulated a little bit. It's got... Um, just uh, some water spotting on there, which is quite common on these uh, Lincoln scents. But, man, this is a huge one. 
look for these. And it's going to gain you a whole bunch of popularity on the secondary market. That's going to go ahead and do it, guys. I hope you guys got some uh, inspiration for this week's hunting before ahead of Christmas. It's going to be exciting to see what happens as we close out the year and get into 2022 with a new series of Washington quarters with a new opera's design. Is the U.S. Mint going to tighten up their quality control? Somehow I doubt it, but we'll see. But there is a lot to look forward to. It's a great time to be alive in the hobby. There's a lot of great stuff to find, a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of very valuable coins out in circulation today. But that's going to go ahead and do it. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Sorry to keep it all ranty and rambly today. I'm just excited because there's a lot of ton of great stuff that sold this week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content. Coinaholics, we're discovering together. You guys take care, have a wonderful weekend, and enjoy your holiday week. So long.